guys, it's Nikki from Love Dirt. Welcome back to another video. Um, today I am going to give you a tour of what's happening in our garden. Now it's the end of spring, so we're sort of transitioning into summer. It's actually been quite typically spring, which is hot and dry for us here in the subtropics. Um, so let's go and have a look and see what's growing. We'll start out the back here. Um, basically, everything is just getting a little bit cooked we've got some mildew problems with our zucchini which is pretty typical for us here in um, the subtropics because it is so humid um, so we've got a button squash here we are just getting um, cucumber fly stinging um, so we have to really be really quick at picking these you can kind of almost see there's like a little sting mark there so they, they sting them before they even um, the flowers even open so this one was open this morning so I'll probably need to cut him off before um, the fruit fly gets in there and starts sort of doing its thing and then pupating out to the ground um, so I am gonna need to net these which is fine I'll just um, just have to hand pollinate um, so if you're not familiar with hand pollinating um, zucchinis and squashes like this you just basically need to find a male flower which is the one on the long stems without the fruit and grab some of the pollen that's inside and when this flower is open on the female fruit which has the fruit attached um, put some pollen in there so it's one thing that you need to do if you do use exclusion nets but that's what we're going to have to do now if we want to get any of these and if we want to make sure that we keep our fruit fly under control but this bed here we planted out in um, September um, there's a few things that are sort of finishing up. Um, we've got a determinate variety of tomato, so they only grow to a determined height and they're not going to flower again. So once that one's finished, um, it's a little bit dry. There's a little, a few issues with it, which is quite typical with um, tomatoes growing at this time of year for us. Um, so once those tomatoes are finished up, um, I will um, pull that out. Um, but we do have the snake beans growing and they will probably keep growing all through summer for us there um, but i will plant out this garden probably not next month yeah maybe next month i'll re replant so i do have some beetroots in here that are ready to come out um i've got some spring onions that are ready to come out there is also some that are going to seed um and we've still got some lettuce going on in underneath here so this bed was the bed I planted out in October and as you can kind of see it's struggling along you can tell by how poorly the zucchinis are doing but um, if you watch my last tour I did actually have this planted out with a whole heap of capsicums and they all got chewed off um, so it's either going to be curl grubs or cutworms in this bed so what I did was um, trying something new I grabbed some um, beneficial nematodes which are supposed to um, eat the eggs of the curl grubs and the cutworms we usually they're usually um, quite devastating the cutworms in autumn for us so I really wanted to try it so I've done that and I've put that in all of the garden beds so we'll see how we go this year I will report back on that but I have a feeling what's happening with this bed is the tree roots are in here so because I've put some root blocker in the bed up the back here um, it's just searched further and I know that it has it's come all the way over to the compost bins before so I know it can reach that so it's gone to the next bed along so I think once all of these have finished I'm either going to turn this into a wicking bed or I'm going to put that root blocker down it seems to be working in the other bed um, but yeah, it's, this garden's just struggling along. Nothing's really thriving um, except for the kale and the cucumbers are doing all right too. So we've got our sewer long cucumbers. I am because I have found those cucumber flies are out and about. I'm going to have to start bagging these as well and hand pollinating. They are a bit slower to grow than um, things like the munches but they do do um, quite larger fruit we've already picked a couple um, I've got a heap in the fridge actually um, so yeah they're, they're a good one to grow they seem to handle the humidity really well for us here now this bed is one that I've just planted out um, so I've just got some seeds popping up we've got corn in here this area here is where I've got a root knot nematode issue so I'm just doing corn because I know that they don't affect that there um, and I've just chucked in some beans and I've got um, 
a capsicum and an eggplant so they've just been transplanted so that's why they look a little bit sad and then some more cucumber there so yeah the chickens have been in here um, I did just chuck in some random bean seeds but the chickens sort of got in and dug it all up which I'm a bit annoyed at but that's life when you have a five-year-old who likes to let the chickens out for unsupervised visits um, <laughs> so these things here do kind of protect them but obviously you need to have it all the way around so I put it where I thought they might get in I didn't think that they'd get get over there but they had I forgot to mention that I added the worm tower in here so I've just chucked a handful of worms from our worm farm in here um, I just thought I might give it a go again. I got this in a clearance bin. I don't know if you can still get them anymore, but it's literally just a tube with holes in it so the worms can come in and out. Um, but yeah, every time I feed the worms in the worm farm, I just chuck a, a little bit in here and then cover it up, gives them some more bedding as well. So this bed here was the one that we planted out in August. So our corn is obviously finished. I've done a chop and drop. We've still got a few things going. So like I'm harvesting loads of the beans, but um, basically from now I'm gonna rest this bed. Um, it is sort of struggling along. And I think again, it's the tree roots getting in. So this is another one that we need to consider um, putting in um, either a wicking bed or putting in the root block up. My problem is, this is what happens when you use untreated timber. So we've got a, a major white ant issue here, how our chicken coop is falling down. It was made from hardwood timber as well. Um, so I've literally just stuck a bit of plastic in there because it was fine until the chicken sort of started chipping away at it and then the soil started coming out. So, um, and it is the reason why we've converted our front garden, which I'll show you in a second, um, to metal beds. So. I sort of ummed and ahed before making these beds about the risk of using this timber and I did untreated timber and I preferred to use untreated timber as opposed to using some of the safer alternatives of the treated timber but basically um, my father-in-law he's used um, treated timber around his house and eventually they do get in anyway so keep in mind that these beds are probably well they are they're five years old now um, so they've done all right um, it's still holding its form and this will make good firewood once we if we pull this down so we might just replace parts it's not completely falling apart it's still doing its job of keeping most of the soil in and i've just uh, sort of put that root blocker in there just to stop it from fully falling out um, but yeah this is one of the things that you need to consider if you're thinking of using hardwood untreated hardwood um, for your raised beds so the aquaponics is a bit of a clean slate. We've put the um, shade over for summer. Um, yeah, and we've just been trying to make sure that our flooding and draining is working properly because um, what happened was these weren't sealed in and the beads were getting in and blocking it. Um, so we're just making sure that's all good. I have just chucked a bunch of seeds in. It's really good for germinating seeds. Um, they're rocket, I believe. Um, I did chuck in some loofah as well but because we moved it all around I'm not sure if they're going to come up so I will redo those um, but we still do have a lot of celery so these are monsters and they really do need to come out I've got so much in the fridge I've dehydrated I've frozen um, I've given it away um, yeah so I'm just sort of thinking particularly with this bed I will take out all of the celery because what it's doing because they have such huge root zones it is blocking everything um, so it's time for those to come out it's a messy job because the roots were so big um, but yeah it's they've got to come out um, and here while I'm here these are sweet potatoes I take cuttings of those um, and pop them in. <laughs> grasshopper just jumped on me um, take cuttings of these and just stick them in here to get the roots um, I find if I and I think I spoke about this in my video last week but basically I get as many slips going as I can and then I plant them out and I find that the more slips I have the more larger tubers I get um, so yeah just wait until I've got some roots then plant them out in the garden where I want them to go
So remember how I was talking about how I hated the front garden? We finally got around to fixing it up. Um, so I did end up going with the birdies bed. So I got two new ones. Um, so these ones I think are the 18 one ones um, just from Bunnings. Um, and we've planted out with corn in this one. Um, there's some cucumbers and beans and sunflowers. And this one we've got zucchini, we've got okra, we've got um, sunflower. So this is about three weeks of growth and a lot of these things were grown from seed. I think just the chili, the eggplant over there. So the eggplant and the chili, which is over there, and the okra, those were the only things that we had planted um, as seedlings. Everything else has just been direct sown. Um, I did have a few cucumbers not come up here, so I've just planted um, a tromboncino in here and some red noodle snake beans. So they will hopefully come up soon and then cover this arch, which will be awesome. Um, here's the startings of one of my sweet potato beds. So I usually try for this size bed, which I don't know if you noticed, but these were one of our original ones that I just got some um, spray paint and spray painted them the same color as the new ones. Um, I did actually try to get the same color as what we had, but <laughs> they didn't have them. So I kind of like this color better anyway. Um, maybe it might be a bit hot, I don't know, but um, it turned out really well. I'm pretty pleased with it considering it's only $15 for a spray can. So it's kind of like, they're like new beds now, considering these are probably 10 years old, these garden beds. So they're doing pretty well. Anyway, back to the sweet potatoes. I'm gonna try and get 12 slips per bed. This one, I'm not sure what I'm planting out there. That will be next month's problem. Um, but I've sort of put in there, I've done my um, lasagna method in there. There's some horse poo in there. Um, there's bakashi in there. You can tell that the, there's bakashi because there's a soldier fly trying to get in there and lay eggs. Um, they obviously can smell that um, happening there. They're, they're just amazing. They must um, have really really sensitive, sensitive smell because it is quite deep down but um yeah I'll plant that out next month I do have a bunch of things seeds hanging around um this bed here which I've just got the shade over it's things that I've transplanted from the aquaponics when we cleared it out um I don't think they're going to do very well so but I've put that shade over it um for now but the plan is here to do some more beds there but in the meantime I'm going to probably do a bit of a flower garden slash um, pumpkin patch I guess you could say um, and just let that sprawl over there I just um, we don't have the budget at the moment um, to get those big beds I'd like to get another two of the big ones we are going to get rid of the fig tree because it doesn't do anything I'm giving it this year I'm <laughs> giving it this year to produce goods I'd rather grow guavas or whatever that are actually going to produce stuff so it's got a year to produce otherwise it's out of here um, we got another compost bin so that's the new area I did buy these really cheap and nasty arch it's not the one I want the one I want will be custom but for now this will do um, I just needed something um, in there for the cucumbers to climb because they're they were ready just about ready to climb so I've just um, grabbed those and it's cable tied together and I'll probably have to put some star pickets in to make it stay in one place but I'm looking forward to it getting covered um, and yeah hopefully the flowers will sort of all kick into gear the kids have put up their um, Christmas stuff already um, and yeah it will be a, a much nicer place um, Basically there I want to put a bird bath as well. So yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how this all finishes up um, But yeah, I'm much more happy with it now So this is one of the garden beds that I am going to wind back and actually We're going to remove it completely because this is where we're going to be moving our carport So this is probably I might put some pumpkins in I just because I don't think we're gonna be doing anything here until um February March next year um but I don't want to invest too much money in um boosting the soil and things like that so I'll just whack some seeds in here if they grow they grow if they don't they don't but I'm letting the tomatoes finish up we've been getting loads of tomatoes from here believe it or not even though they look really straggly 
Um, we've got cucumber flies on the go at the moment, just sort of um, smashing our pumpkins. So I do need to come and protect them. I squished one here yesterday, last night. Um, I haven't seen any more, um, but like I said, the butternut, the little, sorry, the little button squashes out the back um, were getting um, stung. So I know they're about, um, but yeah, the zucchinis, the black beauties have been doing really well. And surprisingly, they haven't succumbed too bad to the powdery mildew, unlike the butternut. <laughs> it's, it's been smashed. I honestly have not been doing anything to protect it, but we've been getting a couple of this every couple of days, which has been nice. Um, but yeah, this whole area, I did harvest a bunch of these seeds, this whole area, we're going to sort of um, shut it down and yeah focus on the other areas of the garden it's just too much to manage when it's too hot and you've got to water everything um so yeah it'll be good to sort of um hands off this area the sweet potatoes here will probably take over but again i'll kind of want to keep it under control to some degree because of snakes no broops um but yeah that's that front garden so the wicking bed is still doing really well it actually probably needs a top up of water we kind of went a little bit nuts with using the water from our water tanks just because we were anticipating a little bit more rain but it's been in the mid 30s for the last three weeks here and um, we haven't had a great deal of rain to restore the garden bed so um, having the wicking bed has been really good because I haven't had to water this and it's just sort of kept on going um, but yeah just a lot of things going to seed in here now but how good does these corn flowers they're beautiful even the snapdragons so yeah always plant flowers if you want to bring in beneficial insects to your um, garden um, it definitely it's not a waste of space but over here in the perennial garden I do need to come in and fix up this salvia the the um, noisy miners like to eat from drink the nectar from this salvia but it is sort of it's a bit straggly, it's falling over, it's shading everything out that's in there. So I've got asparagus and all sorts of things happening in there, but yeah, it just needs to be cut back um, because it's taking over. Back in the spring with the seed production, we've got the lettuce and um, spring onions going. I've got some more sort of tomatoes getting ready to, um, I just upgraded these pots, probably went a little bit early. Normally I wait until they're a bit bigger, but um, yeah, I just did it the other day to upgrade their pots. Replacing the capsicums that got snipped off, so I'll need to find a new home for those eventually. Um, and we've got some rosellas on the go as well. Again, um, my seeds were a pretty low germination rate um, this year again, so I think I'm not refrigerating them enough. So I've only had a couple sort of come up and I had thousands of seeds that I saved, which is a which of a, is a bit of a bummer, um, but that's life. Um, but yeah, we've got some chilies and some more tomatoes and some more basil. Um, so yeah, that's just our succession. I'm about to do another run of lettuce. So now for us summer, we only do the loose leaf varieties and we plant lots often to harvest quite young. Um, and that just keeps us up, up with a succession. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please give us a thumbs up and make sure if you haven't already subscribed, do so. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye.